What's up YouTube? Do you struggle to welcome adult beginners? Well today's your lucky day. I'm going to show you a full lesson of adult beginners tennis content. Some coaches find adults really tough to teach. They don't quite know where to set the drills. Sometimes they set them too difficult, sometimes they set them too easy. In this lesson I'm going to show you an adult week one session. And this is a quite an important week because you're either going to make or break the adults here. You're either going to scare them off or you're going to engage them and motivate them and hopefully retain them. Adults are quite tricky to coach because they make the decision to come to the lesson. And generally speaking, it's a really tough session for them to attend, especially that first session. Adults will be low in confidence, quite nervous and quite timid. So the first session, you've got to break them in nice and easily, make sure they grow in confidence, make sure they meet lots of new people. So this session was actually filmed on a recent LTA instructor course in which I was a tutor. The adults in the video are trainee instructors and I'm showing them how to run a basic adult beginner session in week one. I'm going to take you through a warm up, a body and ball warm up, a racket and ball warm up, a game assessment. I'm then going to show you how I would improve the adult skills and then we're going to finish off with a little game at the end. I am completely mic'd up during the whole session so you will hear my feedback, my communication. You will see how I demonstrate, how I organise and how I communicate through the session. Now, during the first part of the session in the warm-up, I have sped the video up just because it's the icebreaker and I'm asking quite a lot of personal questions and, and the adults are giving me lots of personal information back. So to make sure we keep that information hidden, I have sped the video up. You're not missing too much. You can still see the drill uh, in action on, on the screen. Once we get to the game assessment, I'll let it play in real time so you can hear all my interaction with the adults and my communication and my reinforcement of teaching points. It is quite a long video, but what I have done down below is I've broke it up into chapters, so you can skip to each part of the session that you may find relevant. Ladies and gents, can we please come either on the inside tram line, the service line, or the inside tram line, just so you can see me? Welcome to Tennis Express! Woo! Great. Great energy. <laughs> so, welcome to Tennis Express. I'm literally going to go through the session like it's a real Tennis Express lesson. I did this lesson this week as well, just to practice it, to run through, so I've got something to relate to. Uh, Josh, you want to come this side for us, a bit more space? So welcome, ladies and gents, to Tennis Express. It is a beginner session. We're going to teach you how to be able to serve, rally, and play in just six weeks. I know, I'm not talented. I'm going to be able to teach you how to play tennis in just six weeks. As it's week one, we're going to look at baseline warrior today. So looking at your ground strokes, forehands, and backhands. But before we get going, we're going to go through a little warm-up. Any injuries that I need to know about? No, no, no heart defects or anything like that. No, just checking. I have had that before in the cardio session. The guy was bright red. Long story. So we're going to warm up. So what we do is get in your best way position just behind the line. And we're going to do a little bit of fast feet. Just get your feet going. If I call out number one, we're going to go left foot over the line and back. One. If I go two, right foot. Two. Two. One. If I go three, both feet and then back. Three. Okay, you ready? One. 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 Two. Two. Three. Three. One. Two. One. 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 Two. Two. Ah! Three. 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 One. One. I'm relaxed. Oh my word. Woo! So. Great little warm up, one to get the heart race in to warm you up, but also quite a good one to engage the mind as well. Yeah, because it really gets you to focus sort of straight away, think about uh, what number goes first, and so on and so forth. Can we please come across to my right hand side? I need a glamorous volunteer. Oh, thanks, Josh. You didn't have to volunteer, but thanks so much. So, Josh, what we're going to do, we're going to go into a quarter of the court. Josh, you just face me. A little bit of throwing and catching. We're going to rugby pass. So, both hands on the ball. I'm going to bring the ball out to the side. I'm going to throw. It's going to bounce. Josh is going to catch it. Two hands on it, Josh. Out to your side and back to me. We're going to make each other move a little bit as well because tennis is competitive. Yeah, so two hands on both sides. And what we want to focus on is really extending the arms out. So as you throw, extend the arms out as you throw. So just warming up, body and ball, keeping the ball going. But again, make each other move. And we can have a little chat as we go along as well. So, Josh, what, what, what club do you come from? Yeah. 
Everyone's from Finchley. It's unbelievable. We should just do the course in Finchley. All right. So there's nine of us, so I'll join in as well. Well, ten of us, including myself. Balls are located just behind you here. Get yourself someone that you've not worked with yet this morning. And let's go. Josh, we'll stay together, Josh. It's fine. Can we grab our tennis rackets, please? Woo. Nice energy. Okay, so across my right hand side. Nice and warm now, especially after that fast feet game. Uh, Jack, thanks for volunteering. No, 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 it's not Jack. Jo jo yes. George, George, that's Jack. I was doing so well. So we're going to go have a partner. We're going to find ourselves a service line. So we can use both courts now. George in that box, I'm in this box. And all we're going to do, sorry, not over the net, not yet. Yeah, yeah, he's too key, man. He's just, just in that box. So I'm just going to do a little racket and ball warm up. So as we're beginners, we're going to use a chopper grip. Best way to get a chopper grip, hold the racket on the side, shake hands. Yeah, so it's like you're hammering a nail or something, or an axe, whatever you do at home, I don't know. And all we're going to do is gently just push the ball backwards and forwards. So I'm going to push the ball over the line to George. He's going to push the ball back. So I'm just getting my racket face behind the ball and just gently pushing the ball backwards and forwards. When I feel comfortable, I'm going to use the opposite side of my racket, which is the back end. So I'm going to try and use both sides and just push the ball backwards and forwards. But again, tennis is competitive. So it'd be nice to see you move your partner around a little bit. So around in the boxes and just keeping the ball going, working together. What grip are we using? Chopper grip. Yeah, and we get it by holding the racket on its side and then putting our hand around at the, at the grip. Well done. Can we grab ourselves, not physically, a different partner? We can spread out over two courts. Let's go. So someone like me, if you're not working with yet, I'll go with the spare bud. Excellent stuff, well done. So yeah, make sure you're using your non-dominant hand. I did look around and think, these are really good adult beginners, non-dominant. So we don't, that's basically the warm-up, yeah? And if you imagine for an adult session, it has to be a little bit active. Adult hate, sorry, adults hate doing stretches. Yeah, getting to do windmills and bum flick stuff, and I'm not doing that stuff. I've warmed up already. No, you haven't. But doing a little fast feet game, gets them moving, the body and ball just gets them moving as well. Why do you think we start just over the service line? Why not just go straight over the net? What's the reason for that? Yeah, they might not be able to hit the ball very well. Pardon? Yeah, maybe not enough warmed up. And so if they are struggling to get the ball over the net or they're not warmed up uh, enough and they keep making mistakes, What's going to happen to their confidence? It's going to dip. It's going to drop, isn't it? And adults, you have to understand, the first session is normally really scary. The hardest lesson for any adult is that first one because they overthink. Kids just turn up and just go on. Yeah, but adults will overthink, am I good enough? What are people going to like? I've seen that tennis group on the Monday. They're all absolute dragons. I'm not going to them. They're always moaning. Yeah, or so you have to understand that that first session is really, really tough for them. So just getting into play over the service line. Most players, generally speaking, can tap the ball backwards and forwards over the line. And they also then have a, a opportunity to talk to the, the, their peers and get to know each other. And then they start settling down a little bit. So the next part of the lesson, we're going to get them playing over the net. But we're going to do what we call a game assessment. So as a coach, you have to almost set up a little situation to assess the players. And you're going to do this in your eight videos, which you're going to submit to me as well. And we are going to look at this in more detail on day two. But this is the time of the lesson now when I have a little game assessment. So 
when we were warming up there, I positioned myself in this position here for the reason, so I could see everybody. So even though I was working with one player, I was actually looking around and sort of seeing what everyone was able to do. And we're going to be 10 that everyone was struggling a little bit for hands and back ends, really struggling to keep the ball going. So what I'll do now as a coach, <clears throat> as an instructor, is set up a little game assessment. Oh, Sabine, thanks for volunteering. Didn't have to, but you're so nice, honestly. On that side, for me, Sabine. So we're going to go out with a partner. And all we're going to do as a pair, yet yeah, so non-dominant hand and the coach, you're the player. I can play my dominant hand. Is we're going to have a game called Rally 1, 2, 3. So the first rally, we've got to get one shot. So I'm going to gently, again, rack ahead behind the ball. I'm going to gently punch the ball in. Sabine's going to stop it. Catch it. One. Yes, Sabine, we've done it. We now have to get two. One, rack it behind the ball, push the ball back. Two. Sabine's going to stop it. We now have to get three. And you keep building it up. One, two, rack it behind the ball and push. Three, I'll stop it and catch. And we're going to go for maybe two, three minutes. I'm going to see which pair can get the highest score. What do we start on? What number? One. And when we hit the ball, do we get the racket face behind the ball or above the ball? Behind the ball. Checking for learning. Remember from your level one? Yeah, see. On camera. No, your players will play dominant. Your play non-dominant to have a feel what it's like being a beginner again. In theory. In theory. Okay, as we've got nine players, what we're going to do is one player is going to rest. Oh, George already volunteered. Look at that. One player is going to rest at the net post. Yeah, you just go. Just go. It's fine. That's okay. So one player. Vera will rest first. I'll play here. We'll play for maybe a minute or two, and then we'll rotate around. So get yourself a partner. Spread yourselves over the two courts. Uh, no, you just carry on from the same number. Same number. So if, if you get free and you make a mistake, you're still on free. Uh, yeah, so half court each. Half court each. All right. Everyone got a partner? Ready? Okay, let's go. So let's go for one. That was two. <laughs> All right, let's go for two. Ready? One. Two. I'm going to stop it. Then go for three. One. Two, three, and stop. Oh, go on, let's go for four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's go one place left. So, Josh, if you jump on there, there we go. And then, George, if, 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 yeah, if you take the break. I'll stay here. So, carry on from the highest score. So, if I got five and Jack only got three, we're going to carry on from five. So, whatever the highest score is, mine was five. What was yours? Five. All right, so, so let's go for six. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, just go. Okay. On six, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's go one place left again. So, Sabine, if you take the rest. And Jack, if you skip me. Uh, Mark, we got six in my group. What you want? Four. So, so six, we're on. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, let's hold it there. Come across my outside travel line to my right. Well done. Good timing. So come across my right hand side. Excellent. So that's my little game assessment. And what I'm looking for is 
what the players can do and what maybe they're struggling with. And you lot are very experienced players. Even with your non-dominant hand, you're playing quite well. Beginners won't be playing that well. So I'm going to imagine that the beginners are really struggling because they're hitting the ball too low to the net. A lot of beginners believe that Nadal, Federer, Raducanu, Whelan hit the ball really low because it's really tricky. It makes it really hard for opponents. But tennis players actually hit the ball about six feet off the ground, generally speaking, especially when they're pushed behind the baseline because they want to try and push their opponent back. Height's really effective because, one, the higher I hit the ball, the less chance I hit the net. But also, height's going to push my opponent back as well. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to go out. Oh, thanks, Jack. Didn't have to volunteer. And we're going to have a rally. So we're not going to go rally one, two, three now. We're going to rally between us. But we're going to aim every shot above head height. So above your own head height. And every time you get the ball above your own head height, you score one point. So for me to get the ball above head height, all I've got to do is get my racket face under the ball and then gently lift the ball up. So I'm going to swing low to high. So that would be two. So I get under the ball, I lift it up. Three, four, I under the ball, lift it up. And as you can see, I've got more height. So I'm less chance of hitting the net or the, the players. And it also gives me a bit more time to get ready for the next shot as well. So height's really important for tennis players. And as you can see, I'm pushing Jack backwards a bit more as well. So if I hit the ball a bit deeper, I'm pushing him back. I'm making the court longer, more likely to force a mistake if it was competitive. So that's a challenge what I want to set now. So you're going to go out. You're going to rally for 30 seconds. I'm going to see which pair can get the most shots above head height. So to get the ball above head height, do I get my racket under the ball and lift it up, or my racket behind the ball and go side to side? Under the ball and lift it up. Checking for learning. See, good demonstration. So I'm going to drop out this one. So there's nine of you. We'll have eight on the court, one player resting. Let's go. So get a partner, one resting, eight on the court. We're going to go 30 second rounds. With the beginners. I would start with orange. To be honest, on the first session, I'd bring a mixture. I'd have orange, I'd have green. Have you got a ball? Uh, and what, what I would do, once I've had a little look, I would then, okay, maybe that's too easy. Green ball, or might get some yellow balls if they're quite more advanced. But yeah, I would always start with orange and build it up. So, yeah. So, yeah, so, so ladies, we have you two, yeah, one player resting. Okay, let's go, 30 seconds. Nice, we're lifting the ball above head height. So get the racket under the ball and lift the ball up. Get your racket under the ball, lift it up. We're aiming every shot above head height. Make sure you keep in count. Well done. Okay, let's go one place left. Josh, what was your score? Anyone beat nine? 11. Anyone beat 11? 19. Okay, 19 to beat. Oh, I've got one. I've got one. Jack, can you pass uh, Josh a ball, please? Okay, let's go. 30 seconds again. That's right, he's got, he's got one now. Again, we're getting under the ball. We're lifting the ball up above head height. Let's rotate one place left. Did anyone beat 19? 20, 22. Well done. 
Okay, 22 to beat. All right, let's go. Again, lift the ball up above head height, get your racket face under the ball, then push your racket from low to high. Well done. Nice, Vera, lift it up nice and high. Nice, Mark, nice low to high swing, Mark, very good. Lovely height, Sabine. Josh is lifting the ball up nice and high as well. So is Jack. Wow, oh, it's a compliment got to your head. <laughs> okay, let's hold it there. Come across. Just remember what court you finished on. So just, just remember what just remember what space you've just finished on. And then come back to my right hand side. Well done. So, we set up the game assessment, the rally one, two, three. I noticed that the players were struggling with the height. I highlighted how we hit the ball high. I told you why it's important to get the ball high, to, to, to hit the ball high. Less chance of hitting the net, push your opponent back. I then gave the players a very simple teaching point, head height. I then told the players how to do it, dead simple, rack it under the ball, I lift the ball low to high. And even just walking around watching you lot, very experienced tennis players, it got better. Yeah, the rally's got like 22. Was that your best score in the end? 28. It kept going up and up and up. So that's how we basically structure a very basic adult session or any session. We, we assess, we analyze, we pick out a teaching point, we then show them what to do, we then give them an opportunity to practice it in a what we call a condition point. So remember, what was my condition in that in that game? What rule did I set? Yeah, above head height, Jeff, wasn't it? So hit the ball above head height. So it really focused the players to sort of be able to achieve that. We now go into sort of the game part of the session, the last bit. Come on then, Vera. Let's see if you actually did get 28. So we're going to play a game called Friends and Enemies. So we're going to introduce the serve. So I'm going to serve, you're going to return. We have to get a rally of two before it becomes competitive. You're playing non-dominant. So again, with the serve, I'm literally going to lift the ball up. I'm going to tap it above head height, and then we're going to play the point out. One, two, then the point comes live. I can do whatever I want. I can come into the net. I can miss a volley. Oh, OK, I've run off. On, on the next point, we now have to get a rally of three. So very similar to rally one, two, three. So we've got to play three as friends. Yeah, non-dominant, good luck. That's not bad. One, two, three. And then as we play the point out competitively, oh, I'm going to try and make my opponent move. Oh no, I made a mistake. We'll then play again. What's our rally, our friends rally now? What number? Four. Again, with the serve, you can serve from wherever you feel comfortable. Yeah, if you feel comfortable from here, great. If you want to serve a little bit further back and play a little bit further back, great. We've well, got to get a rally of four. One, two. If the rally breaks down, we've got to just carry on from four. Make sense? So, what shot do we use to start off the rally now? Serve. Is the serve an overhead shot or an underarm shot? Overhead. Well done. So let's go back out to your last position, but go one place left. Okay, we'll spend a few minutes. Thanks, Vera. Friends and enemies. Good question. I would leave it up to them. I'd leave it up to them. Because some, some will go one, some will naturally go two. Yeah, still non-dominant. When you when you teach, when you coach them, you first one. And then two, and then leave them to pick or not to. It's a good question. I'll let them decide. I'll let them decide. And 
if if they're not sure i'd say try both and then feel what's more natural to you because it's 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 the player's choice at the end of the day we will talk about later on when we look at tech, uh, t uh, technique okay still keep working on the height so keep working on getting the racket under the ball lifting the ball above head height We go 11, do 11 to half 12. Keep that ball high. Height's going to be your friend. It's going to push your partner back. It's going to give you time and space. Okay, let's go one place left. So Vera, you're on. There we go. And let's go again. You can carry on your points. Keep your points totaling up. So if you score five on one half court and five on the other, you have ten. Oh, we need some tennis balls. Here you go. Well, we're getting competitive over there. <laughs> Didn't see much height though, uh, Josh and Vera. Okay, keep working, getting the racket under the ball, lifting the ball up above head height. <laughs> Watch out for the uh, laptop. You seen it? Right, let's go one place left and one more rotation. Is that in? Okay, let's go. So keep your keep your points totaling up. Getting the racket under the ball, lifting the ball up low to high. Push your racket low to high to get the height. Great height, Sabine's good. Nice, Soraya. Soraya. Great effort, Mark. Great movement out to the ball. Just didn't lift it high enough. <laughs> How do I play with orange balls? Okay, let's hold it down. Come across my outside tram line to the right. Well done. Unfortunately, that's the end of our tennis express lesson. You all did really well for your first lesson. What was our main teaching point today? So we did baseline warriors. So we played from the baseline or there and about. Played from the back, both back. What was the main theme? Keep the ball high. Why do we need to keep the ball high in tennis? Push my opponent back. Less chance of hitting the net. How do I hit the ball high in tennis? Low to high. By getting my racket face underneath the ball and then swinging low to high. Well done. Give yourself a big round of applause. That's £10 each, by the way. Feel free to leave it over there. Okay, well done. Feel free to have a drink and then come and gather yourself back round. And there we have it. Hopefully you found some value for the video. On reflection, it was a pretty good session. Uh, I had a good group of trainee instructors. They can all play non-dominant hand, so a lot of the coaching was a little bit fabricated. I had to sort of make up the teaching points based on my experience working with adult beginners. And height's such an important factor. 
Height's going to give the players more time to get ready for the next shot. It's going to push their opponent back, but also it's going to reduce the risk of hitting the net. Hopefully making more balls in court, and the more balls the adults make in that first session, the more confidence they're going to regain. As always, hopefully you found some value in this video. If you have, please hit that like button. It really helps us get this video out to more coaches. Please feel free to ask any questions or comments down below on the session. Maybe let me know what you would do differently. Maybe give me some ideas what videos you would like next. And I want to do more content of me coaching, so I'm going to have a mic on. You're going to see me work with players, demonstrate with players, set drills up, show you some drills, how to improve performance. I think that's really, really valuable. So please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you can see those great content. I'm going to put a couple of videos up on the screen now that, me, that you may find useful. And until next time, I'll see you soon.